Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great week. So today, I wanted to talk about makeup that I love, but for some reason, I just never reach for it. Whenever you would ask me, is this good? What do I think about this? I love it. I think it's great, I'd recommend it. Whenever I use it or wear it, I get on great with it, I think it's really good. But I just don't ever reach for it or pick it up, or I very rarely do. And I don't really know why. The first up is the Soft Glam palette from Anastasia. I like this palette a lot, as I do all of her palettes. It's a really great palette. But I do have four of her palettes, and I think this is probably my least favourite. So, you know, on the day to day, I just don't find myself reaching for it, which is a shame. I guess for me, this palette, now that I have, you know, Sultry, Norvina, Anastar uh, Modern Renaissance, they're all Anastasia love. That's why we're talking about them. I feel like they all have a purpose or a occasion where they shine for. And this one is less so. It's kind of like a jack of all trades. If you see what I mean, it kind of does every day very well and it does, you know, nights out very well and it does date nights very well. But I feel like those other three palettes kind of trump it on each of those occasions, if you see what I mean. So therefore, I just hardly ever reach for this one over those, which is a shame because it is a great palette with some gorgeous shades in it. Another eyeshadow palette I just find myself forgetting about is the Dior Backstage Cool Neutrals. I love this palette, it's beautiful. If I go on holiday or I'm traveling somewhere for work or anything like that, I take it with me. But I barely ever use this in my day-to-day -day makeup and I don't know why it's, it's far more versatile than it would appear given that it only has eight shades plus the um, primer and I it deserves more time I think because it's small it doesn't sit with my eyeshadow palettes because they sit in a different place because this is smaller it stores differently so we don't know if that's why I just yeah I just I don't find myself giving it the attention it deserves because it, it is a beautiful palette and it performs really really well and I think because it's smaller I just forget about it which is really sad because it's amazing so as far as like face products this Jouer blush duo I have this in the shade adore which is the sort of peachy one by the way i just dropped this when i was getting stuff ready for this video and a little chunk came out of it but i will say i thought the whole thing was going to be dust so fair play you eh? it is not completely destroyed but still i did lose a chunk which is very sad this is very very wearable i love the finishes of these the lighter one is um glowy and then the peachy one is a little more matte and I just mix them together. The lighter shade on its own is too light for me so I can only use it mixed together or just using the darker shade. I can't use this at all in the summer. I do like it because it's very inoffensive. Like I could use this certainly going to work because it is very subtle and soft on my skin tone. I think it's beautiful, I love it. Since I found the Laura Mercier Peach Blush and the Charlotte Tilbury Climax Blush, I prefer both of those in my like peach luminous blush category and so therefore and again because this isn't like a standard blush packaging it doesn't sit with my blushes i think again i forget about it next up this is the hourglass unlocked palette which is filthy this is the one that was limited edition at towards the end of last year it's the um one that sort of announced that they were going to become or they were committing to becoming vegan totally vegan and totally cruelty free i think it's this by the end of this year i think don't quote me on that I love this palette I love every shade in here but because it is limited edition I am afraid of using it so I just it's just sitting there almost all of the time because I am afraid for it to run out which is kind of counterproductive when you think about it this is a weird one for me but this is the Anastasia dip brow which I think is amazing if I had to pick like one brow product to love that I think is the ultimate best I would probably go with this but I never use it. I think the reason is really just because it is more time consuming than using a pencil for me personally. And also it is, gives you quite an intense brow. As you can see, this is how I do my brows like on a daily basis with, um, I've used the Benefit Goof Proof 
today but I generally use a pencil every day because it's just a bit softer more natural I only really use this on like nights out when I want a really strong intense brow so I hardly ever use this which is a shame because it does dry up when you don't use it but put a drop of oil and it is like straight back to life it is resurrected it's fine what's happening but yeah this is just a shame because I feel like I just favor a more natural brow and also just a quicker brow because I do think this is more time consuming to use you have to go more careful with it so yeah from day to day I just don't spend I want to spend that much time on my brows. Next up, the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. I love this stuff. It smells glorious. It's got a huge dent in it. I'm not sure if you can see. I have got a lot of use out of this. One, I can only use this in the winter. It only comes in one shade and it is a fairly light shade, as you can see. So in summer, it doesn't do a lot of bronzing for me, which is a shame because I feel like it's suited more towards summer when you're wearing less and you want less powder and you just maybe want to do a little bit of CC cream and bronzer. That's kind of what it does for me. But yeah, I think because it's a cream, it, it takes a little bit more effort to apply. You have to be a bit more careful with applying powders. So it kind of is a little bit more problematic. And while I feel like it applies very, very nicely, when it, you know, it just means using a different brush or, you know, cleaning a different brush and things like that. It's just, again, it's because I'm lazy. That is the answer to most things relating to my life. So a foundation that I love but I don't use very often is the Huda Beauty. I really like this foundation. I especially like it in the summer because the shade for me, my summer shade, which is Baklava, is perfect for me. One of my best summer tan skin matches. You only need a very small amount to get very, very full coverage. It looks very smooth and flattering. It wears very well. It doesn't transfer. It doesn't flash back. It's got loads going for it. But I just feel like... For whatever occasion I'm going for, I have one that I prefer, so it just never gets picked up. Like if I'm on a night out, I generally go for either my Luminous Silk or I'll go for my NARS Natural Radiant, or more recently I've been using my Laura Mercier on a night out. If it's for daytime, it's generally a bit too you know, heavy. If I want something that lasts a long time and doesn't transfer, I prefer the finish of my Born This Way now. If I was going for like, an all day and all night event like a wedding or something like that I will generally use double wear just because it's so reliable for that purpose so I feel like it's just always kind of runner-up as far as like being chosen being the chosen one maybe in summer I will start to use it more again next up the highlighter this is the Amrezy highlighter by Anastasia Beverly Hills I love this I think it's glorious what I think is going on with this is I prefer it on my more tanned skin. I think that's what it is. I feel like I haven't used this for a long time. I feel as though I've discovered the Natasha Denona one, the Super Glow, which I prefer. Um, I also prefer Becca's Opal for a more like this type of beaming, proper blinding highlight. Um, and yeah, this one is just starting to just sit there and I'm just not reaching for it anymore. Um, and I'm not really sure why. I do like it. I think it's probably because I find it does enhance texture more than those other two. But I do know that I was non-stop reaching for it in the summer when I was more tan. So I think maybe that might get resurrected when I've got a bit more colour to my skin in the summer. Next up, this is Pat McGrath's Elson lipstick. This is it just here. My, like, I don't know if it's my favourite red of all time but it's definitely up there and it is a glorious formula. It's so smooth and beautiful and just, it doesn't soak into lines. It doesn't dry your lips out. It goes on like silk, but this is actually not about this lipstick. This is red lipstick in, in like general for me. I'm scared of it. I don't like, it's not my preference. I don't gravitate towards a red lip hardly ever. And I feel like I only ever wear like a red lipstick like the week leading up to Christmas and then I just feel like I look silly wearing it or it's just like weird to wear a red lip which I know is not the case I know lots of people just rock a red lip all year round so I can't I don't know what to tell you what my problem is but I just don't ever 
want to wear a red lipstick the rest of the year. I don't even really want to wear it at Christmas, but I kind of make myself to join in the festivities. I've got some kind of weird thing about that. And maybe I need to just start pushing myself out of my comfort zone when it comes to red lips, because there's no reason you can't wear red lips all year round. And I actually think they look gorgeous in the summer, but I'm afraid of them. And I just leave it there thinking, Ugh. and then seeing pictures of other people with red lipstick on going, oh, it's, it looks amazing. And last but not least, another lipstick, and this is Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk. This is one that I got as part of my prize when I won my Charlotte Tilbury stocking um, in the giveaway that I did just before Christmas. And I was like, thank God, because I've wanted this lipstick for a really, really long time. And I don't know what my problem is with it. I feel, I've put it on numerous times. Like I've you know done my makeup and gone to put my lip on and then gone, ooh, and taken it off. And I think it's one of these that is really misleading and I don't know what it is but I feel like on me it clashes or it has an issue with lots of the makeup that I wear as in you know it, I put it on and it's like fighting my eye look or my blush and it's just not because I guess it is actually quite sort of neutral maybe even leaning cool toned um, so maybe if I'm doing a peachy look or a warm toned eye this is maybe just not going with it quite right it just i just put it on a lot and go oh no and then take it back off and i don't know why because in theory it's right up my street it's beautiful i know it's very popular i love it swatched but as with lots of the products i've talked about today it's never the chosen one the final chosen one you know so there you have it. I'd love to know what you guys love if it's in your stash but you just never seem to use or you've neglected and why in the comments down below. Please let me know that I'm not the only one. Hmm. I hope you enjoyed this video and I would love to see you in a future one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.